Okay, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. Today I am filming my birth story as well as um, I'm going to put in the clips that I took during the birth vlog. I didn't really talk to the camera very much, I was kind of in the zone. Yeah, I thought I would run through of what happened and how it all went down. <laughs> My initial due date was the 27th of November, which was a Saturday, and um, Alice was born on the 1st, which is the following Wednesday. So on Monday, on the 29th of November, in the morning, about 9 in the morning, I started feeling some kind of like cramping and nothing, not a big deal, like it was just kind of happening. But yeah, I wasn't too, like nothing was serious, but I was like, oh, maybe the baby's coming today. And I said that to Jessie, I was like, oh, maybe the baby's coming today. But after talking to my midwives and everyone, they, you know, everyone says that things happen at night and that's when you make the most progress because it's calm and your body feels relaxed and you're not stressed about other things. So I didn't really think anything of it. I was just ca carried on. Um, that kind of lasted throughout the day, but then nothing really came from that. Boy. Here. She said boy. Baby boy. So you want to have a little brother. Yeah. Is that exciting? Mm. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. My ears. <laughs> get out. Get, 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 get. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I didn't sleep all of Monday night because I was so hyped up that something was happening. And they were getting a little bit more intense, but they were still like 30 minutes apart. I tried to do an update about 12 hours ago and realized that the whole thing was out of focus, but it's currently 3.30 in the morning and I'm finding it a bit hard to stay laying down. So I think that baby is coming soon today hopefully and my surges are quite far apart and they're not super long but they are fairly strong and yeah I'm just here getting some camera equipment set up um, because I am the camera operator usually I need to make sure that everything is as easy as possible for Jesse to make sure that we can have some decent footage of everything that's gonna happen it feels very weird that I'm making this video knowing that the end of it is going to result in me having a baby. So I went to sleep from about 4 until about 7. I managed to get decent rest. And then, you know, Aurora woke up and we went, by, went about our day. Then on Tuesday... Oh my god. Ugh. On Tuesday, it was all the same, pretty much. Nothing else had changed. It wasn't any more intense. I think I had my bloody show on Tuesday. I can't quite remember. Yeah, and then get to Tuesday night. It's getting a little bit more intense, but not really. Maybe like a bit closer together. I wasn't really tracking all of these things because at this point I was like, I'm going to be pregnant forever. Like this is <laughs> two days of, I guess, early labor is what it was. And I was kind of over it. So I was just like, I'm not, I'm not timing it. I have no idea. Cheers. Just 
and yeah then gets her to Tuesday night I'm editing because I'm trying to get a lot of work done before the baby came which I didn't get done obviously um, but about 10 by about 10 30 or 11 I was like I have to stop because every time one of these comes they're coming like five minutes apart now or five to ten minutes and every time one comes I have to get off the chair get onto the birth ball roll around you know to be comfortable and then I get back up and then I have to get back into it and it's just making working too hard so I was like I'm just gonna take a break I'll get back to editing later and um, maybe I'll have a shower or something and from 11:30, 11 11 11 30 things really started to pick up I had to keep stopping what I was doing and breathing and like I was making noise and stuff but not a whole lot I had a shower or two or I can't quite remember and then at about three in the morning I was like I need to call the midwives this is really hard good morning it's 2 30 in the morning on the 1st of December and things are picking up a little bit I haven't gone to sleep yet or maybe I did sleep for like an hour I'm not really sure I just can't really lay down because it's a bit too uncomfortable things are a bit too intense for me to be laying down through um, and it makes things just really much worse and uncomfortable Aurora's awake so I'm gonna go and tend to her really quick Jessie's still asleep and I haven't called the midwives yet but it's getting to that I definitely can't talk oh. I can't talk through anything and I can't really do anything when I'm having a surge so that tells me that it's time that I wake some people up and call in support but the issue is that thing, these don't seem to be coming very frequently but they're definitely very intense I'll give you an update soon I'm gonna wait for a few more to come see how they feel probably wake Jessie up first and so I called and I had, I think, two or three surges with her on the phone. And at the end of the call, she was like, I don't think you need us to come. You know, it doesn't sound like the baby's coming in the next 30 minutes. So it doesn't sound like we really need to rush over. Call us back when things get a bit more intense. And I said, all right, I will do that. And basically from that call at like 3, 3.30 in the morning, every single surge I had after that was more intense than the last. And every time it was more difficult. So I went back into our room. Um, I had a shower or two again. I was on the birth ball, I was walking around the house, I was in the office, I was leaning over on the bed. Eventually at around 5.30, 5 ish, I think, I woke Jesse up because I was just having a lot of trouble and just got him to, you know, rub my back and things like that while I was going through one. So I didn't call them again until close to 6 in the morning, I think it was 6 o'clock. And I called her and I was like, I need you to come now. And I, I was like really rushed because I was <laughs> trying to get her off the phone before I had another one because I just couldn't do anything while I was going through one so yeah she was like okay cool well um I'll pack up my stuff and I'll I'll be there in about 45 minutes and I was like okay great she said you know tell Jessie to get the birth pool going get start filling it up with water make sure there's towels underneath things like that so we'd already blown up the pool but we hadn't um, filled it up yet so Jessie got to work on that little did I know that that was a whole ordeal and the fitting broke like five minutes into it so he had all the tools out and everything Everyone was at our house by about seven I would say and by this point I was things were really intense and I was really in the zone um, the midwives were amazing and they were really hands-off I was really surprised almost 
um, after the last birth being in a hospital is a completely different experience, but they're very um, mother-led, at least for our team here in Darwin, which was amazing. So, you know, the midwife would come in, check the baby's heartbeat, check my blood pressure, and then leave me be. By about 8.15, I was at, told I was able to get into the pool, which was great. It was a big relief because I was having a lot of trouble by then. As soon as I got in the water, it was like all the pain that I had been feeling was like lifted and getting into the water just felt amazing. At 8.20 or 8.25ish, my waters broke and it was like a big pop and I felt it and it kind of hurt actually because I feel like the, I feel like the baby, like I feel like his head just kind of like pushed right into my cervix and it was like, really intense and in my head I kind of freaked out because I was like oh my god everything's about to get really intense so I was in the pool I started to like get the urge to push and I was like kind of like pushing it just kind of happened and I did that for a few surges and the midwives came over and they're like do you feel like you need to push and I was like yeah I think I do oh. And then I started to get really intense and I was definitely pushing at this stage. The midwives actually never checked me, so I had no idea how many centimeters I was or anything like that, which was actually a huge relief because I was just in the moment and going with it. Um, I had my hypnobirthing tracks on. I had that on since about six in the morning, I think. Um, and I was just playing the affirmations track over and over and over again, which was actually incredibly helpful. They suggested that I get out of the bath and I or get out of the birth pool and I go and try and sit on the toilet. So they just wanted me to lift my leg up and over the birth pool because it's quite tall and they thought that maybe that would help the baby get into the optimal position to be able to come out. And that's exactly what happened. I got out of the pool, I went and sat on the toilet and then my, the sounds that I was making completely changed. I felt it and everyone else heard it. And the midwives were actually quite stressed. Jesse had no idea. Um, he was just, you know, he helped me get to the toilet and we, I was in there and they were saying to him, you need to get her back in the pool right now. And I felt the ring of fire starting to happen. I felt that and I was like, I need to get off here. But I just like, I just couldn't move because I was, it was just so intense. Anyway, so we went back to the pool eventually. I got back in and so I had probably two or three surges on the toilet and that was enough for the midwives to be like, you need to get her back in the pool right now. So I got back in, which was probably the hardest thing I had to do. And then I really started to push and I could definitely feel his head. And it was just so wild because it was unmedicated and it was totally natural. I could feel everything that was happening and I was so present and I was so aware. I felt like my hips were opening, like, like being pulled apart is what it felt like, <laughs> which wasn't overly pleasant, but it wasn't overly painful either. I was very in control and I was really focusing on my breathing. Oh! Yeah, I just, I basically felt his head come down and then go back up and come down and go back up and come down and go back up. And it did that three or four times. I was getting really frustrated that he wasn't just fully coming out because I knew I was so close to having him. And so I gave it one final really good push and his head came out. Jesse still had no idea because I was leaning forward over the birth pool and he was in front of me. So he couldn't see what was going on, but the midwives were all standing behind me. And basically they just have a mirror and they have a torch and that's how they know what's going on. I kind of instinctively got up into a um, like a squat and I sat back a little bit and out came his body and um, and then they, and then I picked him up and then that was it.
was just the most transformative and beautiful birth I could have planned for or could have hoped for. So that was the birth of Atlas and then we just kind of got out of the pool and went to the bed and that's where we spent the next few hours. It was all just very casual, you know, like the, the midwives left after four hours and we didn't have to do anything. My mum stayed for the rest of the day and then dad came over when he was finished work just to help with making sure that everyone was fed and things but yeah otherwise it was it was amazing. Oh, we gotta fix the lights. This is really bad. Oh. Do you love it? I'm so nervous. Oh, can you turn that back on, Mum? Sorry? Oh, no, it's oh. okay. You want it on? No, no, no it's no, all right. No. Oh, shit, nice. What do you think, Aurora? Big smiles? Is it the baby? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna give him a kiss is on the your cheek? little brother. Oh, oh I'm scared. <laughs> okay, move your hand. Daddy's got him. <laughs> hold up. Baby, baby. Did you hold the baby? the baby? He's just sleeping, so I'm gonna go and get him and bring him in so I can introduce him. Okay, I went to go and get him so that you can meet him, but he is passed out, so I'll take you to him instead. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that sharing this birth story and this beautiful natural home birth water birth story with you is helpful and i can't wait to see you next time thanks guys bye